Hello everybody, my name is Philip. I'm one of the Text Help Group Product Specialists and today I'm going to talk about Writing Helper. Writing Helper gives you the seven perfect steps to writing the perfect piece of work. So I've just opened up Writing Helper and just before I do, I'm just going to mention a few things. I'm going to go to File, I'm going to go to Settings and on Display we can actually change our Dark mode. So light mode is the classic mode that we all start with. Then we've got dark mode one, which is my favorite, which you just saw earlier. And then we've got dark mode two, which sort of gives us a nice sort of black on white text background. I'm just going to pop it back to dark mode one because that's the one I'm sort of uh, used to. Writing helper also complements uh, mind maps such as Claro Ideas, Mind View, and Inspiration, but it's very much a standalone product designed to help the student through the process, the writing process. So I'm just going to close that down. Because it's a quick overview, I'm just going to use a project that I've started earlier. So I'm going to open this one. And I'm going to start with step one in the top left hand corner. So step one of this seven step process, you'll pop your name in. Copy and paste the title or your assignment brief in here. The more information you put in here, the better it is, because Writing Helper is able to sort of break down the doing words. And I'll show you this in a moment. Short title, word count. I love putting word counts in because it just helps you break that down during your process. You know what you're writing and where. And we've got an optional hand in date just to remind you when your work has to be submitted. On step two, so it's very much a linear process we can then analyze the title that we've put in. So I've got here, discuss and justify the, the debate around how true an argument is. And this is the title, if I go to step one, that I put in here earlier. So back onto step two, you'll notice that the instructional verbs or the doing words are highlighted in blue. So we can see where these are. To actually understand the words better, we can click on look instructional verbs. And you can see there's discuss, justify, debate, and how true. These are the highlighted ones I have here at the top. Now, this is Oxford Cambridge source referencing here. So this is giving us proper academic level descriptions of the words that we are actually using or sort of seeing in our assignments. I can do the same with justify, debates. Yeah, debate, I should say, argue, how true etc etc so i can really get into the nitty gritty of my instructional verbs i can then take the concepts from my title or my brief concepts are the things that we want to discuss the stuff that we want to build on we can use bits of paper we can make notes we can look through journals and articles and we can start sort of grouping it together we can also use mind maps at this process if we wanted to and we do have a visual map link here to the mind maps i mentioned earlier but we can keep all this within Writing Helper as well. So I'm going to click on Debate once. How true? I'm going to select. So click and hold and drag and select. So these are sort of the ideas, the concepts, the stuff that I want to sort of break down further. Once I've understood that, I can then go to step three, which is my structure. Now, as I've done this earlier, I've already put in introduction, main body and conclusion. So these are the sort of main sections at the top. I can put a new main section in, new main body, etc. And I can delete these accordingly. So I can click on it and I can press delete as well. So I can add and delete and I can drop and drag. I can drag these around and I can move quite freely here. If I would got some concepts, I can add a subsection. I can go back to step two and I can select one of my concepts with the mouse. Just normal left click and hold. Control C to copy on my structure, Control V and paste. So I can move my concepts into the structure that I'm now working on, sort of laying my work out. If you notice, I've popped 200 words in for my introduction, 1600 words for the main body, and so on. So I can break my word count down over my sort of project if I wish. As well as creating another, I'll create another subsection. Go back to the question again how true I might want to control C and we just sort of move across. but I can also add tasks as well tasks allow me to sort of put in theories 
models, stuff that I want to sort of include within my work, stuff I don't want to forget. I can then click on to sources and source it is where I start to actually then populate my structure with the stuff that I want to actually write about the information I'm going to use. I can import in two ways. In the top left hand corner, I can actually open a local file that I've downloaded, such as a PDF that I might have got from the university library or from the internet. Writing help it uses PDFs. So if it's a, a PowerPoint, for example, you wanted to sort of break down, save that PowerPoint as a PDF file, save as PDF. If it's a Word document, save it as a PDF. Click on open file in here, navigate to that PDF that you've just saved and Writing Helper will allow you then to highlight and use that PDF accordingly. You can also import from the internet as well by just copying the web address in. And here's two that I have done earlier. So on the right hand side here, I have actually got my dyslexia as a learning disability sort of journal article. And I've been working through it, sort of highlighting some bits and pieces. But just to show you guys, I'm going to select a paragraph. And let's say I want that in my work. I've just unclicked it. There we go. There we are. Select. And I can now put that in my paragraph and it's now gone on to my sort of highlights on the right hand side here. If I don't want them, I can just bin them off. So I'm just going to go bin, 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 bin. Uh, I'm going to select this one because it's a document I've already done earlier. So I'm just going to select that. There we go. And it puts it on the right hand side. I can then move to the next one. So this is just basically doing ordinary research now. I can then pop that into my introduction. So it's highlighting it accordingly. So on the right hand side here, I can actually move it around. Unsorted snippets are really good for information that you find. I think that's brilliant, but I don't quite know what to do with it yet, but I don't want to lose it. So put it as an unsorted snippet. And the way you save your unsorted snippet is just click on the little paperclip symbol on the right hand side here of the snippet. And that saves it into step five for you to rewrite and paraphrase in a moment. So don't forget to click on your snippet. If you don't want it and you change your mind, you can click on the bin icon and delete it off. But snippets are the research, the stuff that you want to rewrite and use in your documentation. I'm just going to add that into my step five, my snippets. We can also search this document through keywords as well. So I can look for a date, for example, or a name. I can look for Johnson. And it will scan through the document looking for Evelyn Johnson. In. And if I click in this sort of gap here, it takes me to the actual text that I'm actually looking for. I can expand either side of the name to get a better context of the sentence if I wish. And I can also then allocate a section to it if I wanted to. OK, and I can add it into my sources. In the sources tab in the top right hand corner, notice that we've got these green ticks. This is our source information. So I can also look that up on WorldCat and Google Books, which will search here and find the right information for me. On step five, we've got snippets. So I've been moving them from my sources into my snippets where I can then sort of drag my unsorted snippets in. I can then paraphrase these unsorted snippets. So I can click on the on the snippet. I can then rewrite that snippet, adding a citation, so I know that that's quoted correctly. I can also tick off the tasks as I'm doing them. So if I've got a snippet for that particular task, so I know that I've covered that bit of information, I can tick that task off appropriately. So you spend a lot of time here in step five, sort of paraphrasing your research into your own words, sort of sorting out the task that you've done, ticking them off, making sure that you've covered everything. And you'd also add a snippet in here, a blank snippet. So it's this add snippet here in the top right hand corner. And you could put your own notes in here. And there you are. And you can actually write your own text in here if you wanted to, which is really, really cool. So there's my notes. So on the introduction, for example, if I had a note here, I could actually write the full 200 words of my introduction along with my snippet. That's my information that's backing up what I'm going to say. I can then review this information at step six. And it's telling me here on my review, on the right hand side, it's telling me to review this. It's saying reword this document because it's not written correctly. I would, norm I would normally go back and fix this. If I go to step seven, you'll see I've got snippets. 
So I've got seven snippets in total, four left to edit. I've got sources, that's my two journals, and I've, they're fully referenced. I've got tasks, which are completed, and I've got my word count here at the bottom. And then I can publish to Word and then edit accordingly. Thank you for watching.